Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so far we all know that this is going on. And we have a problem with uh, high levels of aluminum barium destruction. But uh, we haven't talked about what will be the solution to stop this going on. Well, that, that's actually why we're here. To yeah, but right. the, the thing is that we keep talking, talking about the, the aluminum levels and this and that, and the, you know, the pH of the air, and the, the water, and the rain, and we all know that. Okay. But we haven't talked very deeply of, uh, in, the, in the solutions. Yes. How do we stop these? And, 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 and let, let me address that as I already did. That's why we're here tonight. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Uh, the thing is, is okay. when you address any issue, it's important to get a And again, when I came out uh, back in May, very few people knew there were maybe five people on the island. As a result, Bruce and other people. Thank you. There you go. Well, this is, uh, if, if you let me finish, um, now we have critical mass and we have people here on the island who want to get active. So that's why we're here tonight to talk about solutions. Again, we're working uh, not only on the streets and in trying to make people aware and that job is not over. We still need to talk about this because there is a number of people here on Maui who have never heard of this issue. So my job in terms of creating awareness is not over. But I hope that you can come in with some solutions as well. Bottom line is this, I cannot solve this alone, Bruce cannot solve this alone, but collectively we can make a difference. Yeah, so this, and, and I'm gonna ask people um, just to, to ask one question because it's not fair to the rest of the people. So if you wanna make, make one more statement that's, you were referring to all these uh, people in Congress and uh, politicians and, uh, and they, don't, they don't even know what's going on and who is in charge of all this brain. If this is a, a group from the government, it's a private party doing all this, who is allowing all this to go on and on and on for so many years and it keeps going on and it's spreading all over the world. So the thing is that uh, where should we go and talk to to say, okay, this is going on, and we can stop it or not, or avoid it, or this is going to go on, and there's no solution at all. Yeah, good question. No, there absolutely is a solution, and I hope that you watched the last part of the film. But we are working on a clean sky ordinance. Um, I came here to Maui. I've been working with Bruce and uh, Mahalani Ventura, and that will be an ordinance to ban geoengineering on and around the county of Maui. That's one of the many things that we're doing. But again, to answer your question that you keep on asking me, that is why we are here, to talk about solutions. And I encourage you to bring something to the table because it's up to each and every one of us in this room to get active. Thanks for bringing that up. And you had a question, Matt? I, I, I've been noticing this for years, and it's the, always the white jets. Do, do you know, were you able to find out in your research in terms where are those planes are coming through this iron? Yeah, well, it's not a, a simple question. Since the release of the film, it's been an avalanche. I've been working certain, some days, 90 hours a week, just responding to emails, doing interviews. But uh, there are many different governments, many different corporations involved with this. We know Evergreen Air is, is one of the uh, um, corporations involved. Many people know uh, Air America, uh, which is now Evergreen Air. That's a CIA company. Um, so they're believed to be involved with this. If you look at their website, they boast about their ability to, uh, to see clouds and to spray um, from these airplanes and, and about the payload. They say that they can take off from most major airports around the world. I think they need either 1,000 or 10,000 uh, feet of runway. Shepard might know what the number is on that. Do you know if it's... Uh, no, I don't know if it's also a model of the USGCRP. Yes, there are many different branches of the government. You had made a statement that the members of Congress knew nothing about this. And, and my question is, why do you 
Do you trust the, uh, the, the members of Congress? Many of them are aware of it. Dennis Kucinich actually addressed this in his 2001 Space Preservation Act. Um, the, the issue is, I think politically, there might be one or two decent politicians, maybe. I could be wrong on that. Uh, <laughs> but we have to realize, if a politician uh, has good intentions, um, if, if they have good intentions, think about their position on this. These are legal programs, they're multi-billion dollar, and the agenda is complete control, complete weather control. So uh, I think for the politicians who might want to do something about it, they have to deny it because if they admit that it's going on, then they have an obligation to address it. And I think many of the good-hearted ones, if there are any, have no idea how to address this because this is not only uh, here in the United or in the United States, but this is a worldwide issue. Um, so, from a political standpoint, I've spoken with Senator Karen Johnson many times, you know, by, about why it's it's uh, a challenge to address this politically. So she's opened up to me about that. You have a question? It's it's definitely. I mean, it seems to me that as an expression of old school Republican politics, that there's a lot of The, it is essential that, that our younger generation get active and start addressing this. So you're talking about the elite people, the people who, who are coming up. I, I call them the criminal elite. Um, I can't say elite without using criminal elites. <laughs> they go hand in hand. Um, but, but, mm -hmm. I, I think so, and I think it's important to reach reach out to them. Absolutely, um, I do. You know, I'm, I'm from Los Angeles, so I'm working with communicating with, with some people who are very plugged in and very involved with the entertainment industry and have some pretty big names. So we'll see what happens as a result. The bottom line is this. Um, this is an issue. I'm not going to wait for uh, a famous person to address this. I'm not going to wait for somebody with money. I'm going to wait for myself. And I'm going to wait for you to collectively stand up with me. And the reason is this. We can't look to other people to solve these problems. It is so essential. It is so essential, and again, the human spirit has so much power and so much authority. We do. We just have to exercise that. And I think, in a sense, we've been conditioned since we're, you know, young children, to put our faith in, into perhaps a celebrity or, or maybe even even a political official. I think we've been taught that for a reason, but that's very damaging. And we do have an issue now that affects each and every one of us and it affects us in a major way. And it is incumbent upon each and every one of us who is aware of this to take some form of action. And I can't tell you the seriousness of this issue, and this is not based on fear, but it's based on my hope that you'll get up and start doing something with us. Because we hold the power, we just have to exercise it. We just have to speak. And within a year and a half, I've seen miracles happen. I've seen millions of people awaken to this, and this is the first start. But this is our earth. This is our baby. And if we had a baby, or if you had a child that was being molested, and you knew somebody was molesting it, I'm pretty sure we would all stand up. And this is the same thing. This is our earth. Our earth is being molested. We have to stand up. And short of nuclear fallout, I believe that nothing could be more serious than what we're facing right now. So I want to encourage everybody to please get active. That is my greatest hope. Small points are there. At the end, you wanted to show in D.C. In the major capitals of the world, there are any studies that show that, for example, D.C. has some sort of uh, poisonous 
activities. I, I mean, that would be someone to get attention. The second one is, is there anything developing? Politicians usually respond to constituent pressure. And it's constituents that do something that makes them listen, and not so much because someone comes and shows a piece of paper. Right. There was a, uh, a state senator in California who just addressed this. So he admitted that it was going on. At a much larger level, yes, rain is occurring in Washington, D.C. when we're there. You know, we, we photographed a lot of trails, even right up right above the White House. So it's, it's happening everywhere, uh, almost. Are there, are there tests that show that the, that the ground, the soil, or in the D.C. area is poisoned? I would have to look in, in the library and, and see if anybody from the D.C. area has done any rain tests. My guess would be yes. But you can look at geoengineeringwatch.org. Um, and they should have tests. They have tests from around the world. So if anyone's done... Who is the California politician? I just got the email today, so, so I can't remember the name offhand. Several so. years ago, in, in the North Bay of California, there was a thing where they, they actually stopped that stuff. They stopped. They stopped. Oh, you're talking about the moss spray. That's right. Totally different. Well... That's a totally Okay, from you or? From anybody. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I got a billion. Dr. Marsh. The one thing that's really difficult is when I express to people because I talk to every day with people about this, they say, well, why would they poison themselves and their family? You know? So that's a real hard one to get around um, for people because, you know, as you say, Washington, you see the president's being passed. Yes. I, don't spend time in Washington, D.C. Well, well I, I have two theories on that, and typically I don't like to get into too much of theories, but the question comes up on every radio show, in every screen, so, so I was ready for it. It's a, it's a very valid question. I have two, um, two theories on that. Now, thanks to you and many other people, I know how to remove aluminum barium and other things from my body. So I'm taking measures based on what I know. And that's based, I think, on pretty limited resources. The people who are orchestrating this, Bill Gates, the Rockefellers, Rothschilds, um, all of these criminal elite, I think it's safe to assume that they have better access to greater technologies. Now that's theory, and that's like my second one. What I really think it is, geoengineer David Keith uh, made a statement several months back. He said geoengineering gives man godlike power. A big part of these programs is weather control. Why would somebody want to control the weather? Well, let's take a look at that. If you control the weather, um, you can control the food supply and political systems. You can have godlike power. Now, just looking around, I think it's safe to judge that nobody in this room has probably chased godlike power, but we know that there are certain individuals that are doing this. And, but I think most people in this room have had uh, a family member, a loved one, or a friend who's gotten dependent on drugs. And let's compare power to a drug. We've seen these people not only put their own health at risk, but the health of their family and friends at risk to achieve this rush from the drug. Power is a drug. And these people will do anything to obtain that rush for power. That is their drug. And I really think that's what this is about. Because our planet is being destroyed, but it is consolidating power and the hands of the few. And I think that's what we're dealing with at the expense of everybody else. And that was our last question. I'd be more than happy to, uh, to answer additional questions at the table. And again, please um, help support. So disappointed. Go ahead and take one more. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll take one more according to. <laughs> you could not have forgotten that quickly. <laughs> I actually have uh, an inspirational, um, something to share that's very inspirational that might be motivating you guys. Um, in Canada, the Indian tribes got together as a collective and they kicked out the uh, churches. And uh, because there were a lot of atrocities being committed, children were being murdered church and they kicked them out and they put a public notice up that went up worldwide informing these uh, churches and their clergies and officers that they had to leave and they were very 
very successful. If they can do that, so can we. Well, look that up. It's, it's amazing. It's a public service. We, we can do that, and I can't stress enough. We have the power. We have the ability. And that's why I'm here in Maui, because a lot of great things are happening, and there's a lot of people who have gotten active, and we have only just begun. I think that was a song by the Carpenters, but we have <laughs> only just begun <laughs> to live. And when addressing this, I can't stress the importance of having a sense of humor and having fun with it. This stuff can get pretty heavy. But if we address it in an effective way, in a fun way, we can have fun at defeating our opponents because there is opposition to this. Um, so I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I want to thank each and every one of you for having an open mind. I want to thank all of you uh, who will be working together with all of us. Uh, I'm planning on coming back in about a month and maybe never leaving because some wonderful things are happening here. So thank you, everybody from Maui. And, and again, we have DVDs and T-shirts available. T-shirts are, are $10. I've reduced the price. I'd like to go back with an empty suitcase. Um, and please help support the work. Buy a DVD and make copies. Thank you. Mahalo.